and back for another video. Well given the following the true altitude video has had, we decided to make a video on how the airspeed indicator works this time. And by the way, if you have any questions on these videos or have a topic that is giving you problems, whether on the knowledge test themselves or it's just a general aviation question and would like for us to give you a video explanation, just post a question as a comment or email us at pts at pilottrainingsolutions.com and we will gladly answer all of your questions. So first of all, let's see how the airspeed indicator works from the inside out and name its parts. Starting from the outside, the airspeed indicator is connected to the pitot tube and drain hole which feed impact air to the diaphragm and to the static port which feeds the outside pressure to the chamber of the instrument. We will see later in detail why it is important to do this. The diaphragm, in turn, is connected through levers to the sector which is connected to the hand taft pinion. And now that we've seen how the altimeter is built, let's see how it actually works. The altimeter is probably at first glance the simplest instrument on the airplane except maybe for the compass. As you fly through the air faster and faster, as shown by the animation, the air striking the pitot tube enters more rapidly and this expands the diaphragm further and further. The diaphragm is connected to the sector through levers which rotate it and in turn this rotates the hand taft pinion that is directly connected to the speed dial and displays the current speed. So if everything is working properly, the airspeed indicator will always, most likely, read accurately. But what happens if its connections to the outside world become occluded? For that, let's take a peek at the next couple of slides. Now, the airspeed indicator is affected only by changes in temperature and not in pressure. We will see why pressure doesn't affect it on the next slide. As you probably know, colder air is much denser and as you can see from the animation, as you fly into colder air, the denser air exerts a bigger force on the diaphragm and therefore expands it more. This obviously affects the reading on the dial. The colder the air is, the higher the indicated airspeed, while your real speed, your true airspeed, is actually lower. Vice versa, the warmer the air is, the lower the indicated airspeed reads, while your true airspeed is actually higher. On the other hand, pressure changes do not affect the airspeed indicator at all, as long as everything is working properly. The reason is that the chamber of the airspeed indicator is connected to the static port, and this means that as we fly along, as shown by the animation, from, in this case, low pressure to high pressure, the pressure differential between the diaphragm and the airspeed chamber stays the same and the diaphragm expands and contracts only a result of changes in impact air. So if the speed doesn't change, the airspeed indication remains unaltered. Next, let's look at what happens when things start to clog up. Now let's start from the easiest and most common problem you might encounter. Say that you're flying and it starts to snow. Again, as you can see from the animation, as the snow starts to accumulate on the pitot tube, the opening starts to freeze over. As this is happening, the impact air inflating the diaphragm starts to bleed out from the drain hole and the indicated airspeed starts to drop until the impact air entrance is fully clogged, at which point the indicated airspeed will drop to zero. Keep in mind that the aneroid wafer still holds the outside pressure inside of it, but this is equal to the pressure inside the chamber of the instrument. Therefore, the reading of the airspeed indicator does drop to zero. On the next slide, you will understand better this latest pressure concept. Now, in the case of a complete blockage of the pitot tube and static port, it is pretty obvious, at least if we know how an altimeter works, to figure out what will happen. In essence, we have actually transformed the diaphragm into an aneroid wafer and therefore transformed the airspeed indicator into an altimeter. The air and pressure inside the diaphragm is now trapped while the pressure inside the chamber changes based on the outside pressure. So if again we started flying from an area of low pressure into an area of high pressure, we would notice that the airspeed indicator would start to read lower because the higher pressure in the chamber of the instrument would squeeze the diaphragm, therefore forcing the airspeed to read lower. Keep in mind that it is highly unlikely that both pitot tube and drain hole 
become blocked simultaneously. Your PETA tube would probably clog first, dropping the airspeed to zero, and eventually the drain hole would also block, converting the airspeed indicator into an altimeter. But there are some test questions that present the scenario, and therefore we had to explain it. Now, if the static port became blocked, the result would be the opposite of what we saw on the last slide. If the airplane keeps flying at the same pressure, the airspeed would read perfectly. But, as we can see from the animation, if we again started to fly from an area of low pressure to an area of high pressure, the airspeed indicator would start to read higher. Because while the pressure inside the chamber of the instrument remains unaltered, the pressure inside the diaphragm would increase. And again, because high goes to low, the diaphragm would be forced to expand, giving a higher airspeed reading. Finally, it is needless to say that if everything blocked at the same time, pitot tube, drain hole, and static port, the instrument would just freeze in its current position. On next and final slide, let's take a look at things through a mathematical point of view. Okay, another way to answer the test questions is through a simple mathematical process. Let's introduce this imaginary formula. V equals D plus S minus S, where V is the velocity of the aircraft, the true airspeed. D is the dynamic or impact air. The first S is the pressure of the static air entering from the pitot tube or the drain hole. And the second S is the static air entering from the static port. Now let's say that you're flying at 100 knots and the pressure is 27.92. The formula would read V equals 100 plus 27.92 minus 27.92 or V equals 100. As long as everything remains functional, the speed would always be accurate. Now let's say that the pitot tube becomes blocked. Then we have V equals 0 plus 27.92 from the drain hole minus 27.92 from the static source, or V equals 0. So as we saw on an earlier slide, if the pitot tube becomes blocked, the airspeed drops to 0. If the pitot tube and drain hole block, we would have V equals 100 plus 2792 fixed value, it will not change anymore, minus 2792, which varies depending on the outside pressure. If we climb the 1,000 feet, the formula would be V equals 100 plus 2792 minus 26.92, or V equals 101. So, as we climb, the airspeed reads higher, and as we descend, lower, just like an altimeter. Finally, if the static port become blocked, the formula would read V equals 100 plus 2792, this time this value is variable, minus 27.92, static, this will not change. So again, if we climb the 1000 feet, the result would be V equals 100 plus 26.92 minus 27.92 or V equals 99. So, as we climb, the airspeed reads lower, and vice versa, as we descend, it reads higher, the opposite of an altimeter. Remember that this formula does not really exist, but if you can remember it, it may help you answer the questions on the test. If you like this presentation, don't forget to visit PassFAExams.com for our latest videos and to download our free demos which will show you an easier way to pass the FA knowledge test. And again, if you would like for us to explain further topics, write us a comment or email us at pts at pilottrainingsolutions.com. We are always happy to answer all of your questions and aviation needs.